mean, as girls, we're feisty. If we can do that, it will not in the world. But sweet, my M. Not. My name is Anthony. I am at the moment a 62 year old uh, cabaret burlesque performer. I call myself the newest, oldest showgirl in town because I don't see other people doing this at uh, my age, but I like the idea that people know I'm an old showgirl. Turning 60 for me was this is an opportunity to actually start doing things that I kind of think I missed out on when I was a bit younger, to feel expressive as a gay man was always a bit sort of frowned upon. You could mask and try to pass as a straight person, and I never did. I was a puffy boy, and then I kind of tried not to show myself up too much. And then I thought, if I'm now at this point at 60, and I haven't actually played about in some of the playgrounds that I want to play in, it's my own fault for having left it so late. So I love sewing. I love makeup, I love seeing people with great hair, and I love the kind of creating the characters that burlesque and drag has enabled me to do. And 60 just seemed to be a kind of fuck it moment. The first thing I wanted to do with my burlesque was to say, I'm 60 and I'm not going anywhere. But if you kind of grab it and say, I want to make the best of my 60s and reinvent myself, then that was the, the kind of the act that I put together. What I didn't realise is that it appealed to 20-year-olds and 30-year-olds and 40-year-olds. And on the first performance that I did, I had older people coming up and saying, we're so proud of you, I'm 57 or I'm 63. And then I had 20-year-olds going, oh my God, this is amazing. My parents should watch your act because they're aging too quickly. And I realized that my kind of 60 message was just a kind of symbol for, you know, be yourself at any age, don't wait until you're 60. It kind of felt like I got rewarded by trying to say one kind of um, can I swear? I kind of wanted to say one fuck you moment. And in fact, I got rewarded with like loads of love. And it's like, this is not a fuck you moment. This is a fuck yes moment. I just started uh, just trying to capture things when I, when I kind of had ideas. I was doing an ABBA night at one point and I found these Disney princess dresses. You know, there's like dresses for three-year-olds. They were in a charity shop for pound, you know, ABBA, Disney, Disco, pink and blue, would like would be nice to find a cropped jacket and have flared sleeves like a fishtail in opposite pink and blue to legs. I don't even know what that means now, but you're not just wearing clothes on stage, you're wearing those clothes for a reason. They're telling a story, they're moving in a particular way, they're enhancing your body in a particular way, you're covering up in order to uncover. So I kind of really like that structural engineering in there. And, you know, I'm a bald man and there's a lot of lovely bald drag, but I love a wig and I love what it can do to your face. But then the wig has to stay on and then it has to be dressed in a particular way and then it also has to say something. They change everything about, especially the transition that I would have is that I'm, you know, a, an old uh, man with no hair and then suddenly she goes on and I've, all, and I've become Joan Collins, you know, there's things that you can do, you play with it, it makes it move, you swish, you swish back again, you know, there are ways that you can put it up and, you know, you fan the back of your neck, so it, it creates performative moves. I could be doing a hair commercial right now going, oh, dry hair, flaky scalp, just wash your hair in this. I have had people saying, should you be uh, telling this story or maybe using that voice. Why don't you do it through a different lens or do it? Um, and I don't think I've got any power as a man to tell a story of age through a male lens because I don't think I'm that impressive. I put Medusa on and I'm suddenly a clown and I've got the ability to break through uh, your judgment of whether I should say this or this person saying, well, that's not your story to tell. And then I can just say it and do that. Well, here it is. Can I show you some of my shoe collection down in the cellar? Because there's also a whole bunch of shit that I'm holding on to. Mind your feet. It's quite low as well. Charity shop glasses, sunglasses galore, 
hats. A friend of mine was getting rid of her mum's stuff in the attic. I mean, you can't do better than that. This is my favourite. Of course, it's going to have to be a sort of Barbara Cartland moment. Now, I've no idea if I'm ever going to use this, but it's just enough to give me an idea of, you know, these nursing home blues. <laughs> the very first thing I do is try to acclimatise my feet to being in heels. There are lots of physical challenges to performing as a Medusa. I'm in heels, I'm in fishnets, there's a wig, I'm wearing eyelashes. I'm sometimes not very good at putting my eyelashes on, so sometimes I'm half blind anyway. I want to make sure that that is right. What I do is I prepare not to become someone else, I prepare to do the act. Okay, so I'm already having to think differently about how do I behave, it's going to make the angles different. So as a boy, you know, I might be like this, trying to try to parallel. As Medusa, I'm constantly playing with angles and the heels enable me to do that. But balancing on one heel whilst you're on the other toe requires more core than I've ever used before. So one of the things that I'll do is a kind of fish swan thing. I have to, you know, I've got a few movements like that, and then, bang! As a person in this body, as Anthony, I'm often quite invisible and I'm quite happy to play backseat, I don't need to be important. When I'm walking through any room as Medusa, I'm going to be waving, I think I'm Princess Margaret. So it gives me permission to do that without feeling embarrassed or ashamed about it. Right now I need a bigger, a bigger mirror to just start. I feel gorgeous. <laughs> I'm less attracted to shame. I don't need shame in my life. And, you know, if there's a sense of shame, I go, whose shame is it? Mine or is it yours? It's very liberating. It's very empowering. It's made me braver. It's expanded my creative skills. It's forced me to learn new things. And it's exposed me to a community of people that I would never have access to.